二零二零年第二条题目系讲生态系统嘅，咁呢幅图咧就显示咗一个海洋嘅生态系统，佢哋各个营养级嘅总生物量。咁呢幅图咧，其实都同我哋书本学嗰个生物量塔咧都好相似噶啦，都系一个好典型嘅下阔上窄嘅生物量塔啦，从而咧就显示咗一个能量嘅流失啦，系咪？咁 Part A 咧正正就系问呢个问题啦，随住营养级嘅升高。每一級嘅總生物量咧係層層遞減嘅，就要我哋提供兩個理由去解釋呢個現象。咁頭先剛剛先講咗啦，就係講緊能量流失啊嘛。係啦，你將呢個能量流失攝咗去中間，係咪就答咗題目呢？你諗下咯，隨住營養級升高，喺食物鏈當中有能量嘅流失，所以每一級嘅總生物量就層層遞減啦。咁呢個都只不過係一個原因啫。但而家題目要你講兩個喎，所以呢條題目考緊我哋嘅呢，又係直線抽擊答題法啦。你唔係淨係講嗰個能量流失啊，你要講緊能量以乜嘢嘅方式去流失啊。咁所以啦，你見得到啦，其實呢，喺每一個營養級之間呢，當中就只會係得大約十個 percent 嘅能量去傳到俾高一層嘅營養級嘅啫。所以你睇翻題目嘅話咧，呢、這個營養級嘅總生物量咧係由一千去到一百，去到十，去到一嘅。咁能量流失有好多唔同嘅方法嘅，例如書本所講嘅 uneaten body material， 就即係唔係整個身體部分咧都會被進食啦。就算俾你食曬成個身體啦，你係咪能夠消化曬整隻嘅獵物咧？又唔係喎。咁所以不能消化嘅部分，亦都不能被吸收，不能被吸收嘅部分就會被排為 eject 出咗去啦。又或者每個營養級嘅生物咧，都會透過呼吸作用啦、排泄啦、熱能啦，咁樣去流失個能量嘅。咁可能你會問啦，梁 Sir， 今次佢係講緊海洋入面嘅生物，我唔計啲水草啊，我就計啲魚啊。無論係細魚、大魚定係到鯊魚，佢哋都係冷血嘅動物嚟嘅，佢哋會有能量嘅散失嘅咩？梗係有啦，好多同學咧都誤會咗嘅，淨係以為咧係温血嘅生物，好 mealworm， 例如哺乳類啦。鸟类啦，先会有熱能嘅散失。呢一 part 又要提翻有关于生物科嘅哲學啦。能量流失，尤其是熱能嘅流失，无论系温血嘅生物定系冷血嘅生物，唔系有冇嘅问题，大家都有，只系不过多与少嘅问题。例如我哋啦，人类咧系温血生物嚟噶嘛，我哋嘅熱能嘅流失系较为多一啲嘅。因為普通嘅室温咧就廿五度，但我哋嘅體温咧就三十七度。平常嘅室温咧，我哋已經流失緊熱量噶啦。而去到冬天嘅時候啦，得翻十度，甚至再凍啲嘅地方，零下幾多度嘅熱能嘅流失係更加大。咁如果去到夏天啊，周圍都三十度，咁我哋熱能係咪散失得少啲咧？又唔係喎，我哋嘅身體係無時無刻都會產生熱能啊嘛。加上你跑下步啊，做下运动嘅话啦，你嘅体温都会升高。其实你都要散失较为多嘅热能嘅。鱼类啊，佢哋成日浸住落水啦，仍然都有热量嘅流失嘅，因为佢嘅身体系有新陈代谢噶嘛，佢哋仍然游紧水噶嘛，游水嘅时候啦，肌肉收缩咧都会产生温度，当中亦都有热能嘅产生，所以亦都有热能嘅散失啦。跟住啦，就到 Part B 啦，鲨鱼咧系海洋中嘅顶级消费者。佢喺控制其他海洋生物嘅族群數目咧，扮演一個好重要嘅角色嘅。而題目咧就問我哋啦：如果鯊魚絕種啦，將會引致生產者嘅族群數量係過剩，要我哋解釋下呢個情況係點樣發生嘅呢？咁呢個題目咧就係考翻我哋啦，喺成個食物鏈啦、唔同嘅生物之間啦，佢哋嘅互動嘅關係。而題目係要我哋去解釋呢件事係點樣發生啊嘛。咁我哋就要釐清咗整條題目嘅因果關係先啦。個因呢，就係鯊魚絕種，個果呢，就係生產者族群數目過剩。第一樣我哋要提返嘅就喺呢條食物鏈當中，佢哋嘅捕獵關係。生產者就係水生嘅植物啦，跟住到細魚、大魚就係初級同埋次級嘅消費者啦，跟住去到鯊魚就係頂級嘅消費者啦。然後呢，我哋就將成個故事講一次喎。点解鲨鱼絕种会导致到水草太多呢？咁我哋就要去预计翻喺每个营养级之间啲生物嘅互动，点样去导致到佢哋嘅族群数目嘅改变啦。一开始鲨鱼絕种，次级消费者嘅族群数目将会失去制衡，因为冇人食佢哋啊嘛，随之啦就会上升啦。而由于次级消费者多咗嘛，多咗大鱼，咁自不然咧，佢哋就会大量咁捕食咗初级嘅消费者。就令到初級消費者，即係啲細魚啦嘅族群數目，亦都會大跌啦。去到故事嘅最後啦，由於初級消費者嘅數量大跌啊，所以就冇魚去食水草啊嘛。
，所以啦，生產者嘅數量就會過剩啦。呢條題目咧就係問你食物鏈啦。咁下次嘅題目好似二零一五年嗰條問返你食物網又得唔得呢？例如啦，當啲八爪魚死晒，咁去到啲蚌啊，或者啲海星啊，佢哋嘅族群數目又會有啲咩嘅改變呢？咁過往我都拍咗段 shots 呢去解釋呢條題目嘅，咁大家快快手睇返咯。好，跟住啦，就嚟到一點出發啦。題目呢，就先係講生物量追睇嘅。之後就考我哋兩個概念啦。第二啦就係生態嘅互動啦。有關於食物鏈啦，佢代表住啲乜嘢呢？原來佢係能夠顯示到物質嘅流動同埋能量嘅流動嘅。咁過往都有唔少題目係有關於食物鏈嘅，同埋數量啊、生物量塔啊嗰個顯示嘅。咁今次呢個題目呢就冇問到嘅，下次我點樣問你呢？根據呢個生物量追睇，你可唔可以畫返一條食物鏈俾我呢？或者根據呢個生物量嘅追睇，你又可唔可以畫到一個數量嘅追睇或者數量塔俾我睇呢？嗱，就到生態互動啦，不得不提嘅又係講生態位啦。大家喺個食物鏈當中都擔當住唔同嘅位置，你係生產者，我係消費者，消費者都有分唔同級數嘅消費者。然之後啦，我哋就要理解下族群大小嘅變化啦，當中就要理解下現時效應啦。今日啲鯊魚絕種係咪代表聽日啦？啲水草嘅數量就會飆升呢？原來當中係一個現時嘅效應嘅。而題目呢，都有另一個概念再考大家嘅，就係、是、有關於能量嘅散失啦。有關於能量散失嘅方法，大家要温下書咯噃。Two two question two is about the ecosystem. The diagram shows the total b i o m a s s at each trophic level in a marine ecosystem. So you can see this very typical upright pyramid of b i o m a s s And actually, what does it show? It shows the energy loss along the food chain. And part A is about the energy loss. As the trophic level becomes higher, the total b i o m a s s of each level decreases. We need to give two reasons for this phenomenon. As what I mentioned, it's about the energy loss. That, that's the fundamental concept of the food chain. Therefore, the whole story seems like this: as the trophic level becomes higher, there will be more energy loss along the food chain. Therefore, the total biomass of each level decreases. So you may think that, oh, Mr. Lang, I know it. The answer is energy loss. And then I need to remind you that you need to give two reasons. Energy loss, yes, is the reason. However, you need to answer the question straight to the point. Energy loss is the starting point. But what is the whole story? You need to recall the impact of the energy loss along the food chain. Therefore, you need to talk about that. How is the energy lost along the food chain? Therefore, you need to recall that energy loss is through the uneaten body material, ingested material of the organism, excretory products of the organism, and respiration. Biomass of the organism at lower trophic level is not 100% available to the organism at the higher trophic level. In order to answer this question, explain this phenomenon, you need to talk about the reason. Not all the body parts are consumed. Even I consume the whole body part. It doesn't mean that I can digest the whole body of the organism. It means that the indigestible parts will not be absorbed. The unabsorbed part will be ingested. Last but not least, energy loss at each trophic level through respiration, excretion, and heat. So for the heat, I would like to talk about one misconception. Some students they think that only the homeoferm, that means the warm blood animal, just like the mammals and the birds, they lose heat to their surroundings. It is a wrong concept because even for the poikiloverm, cold blood animal, for example, the fish, the reptile, the amphibian, they also lose heat energy to the environment. I need to mention the philosophy again. For the heat loss, it's not talking about yes or no. It's talking about more or less. For the homeoferm, as mammal, human being, we lose more heat to the surrounding compared with the poikiloverms, the fish. Because even the fish, they live in the ocean, they live in the water, they still lose energy. Even they do not have the ability to maintain the relatively stable body temperature. When they move, when they swim in the ocean, the muscle contraction will also produce the heat energy, and this heat energy will be lost to the water. For part B, shark being the top consumer in the ocean, playing an important role in keeping the population of other marine organisms under control. It's predicted that the extinction of shark would result in overpopulation of the producer. Explain how this would happen. 
So this question, it needs us to recall the ecological interaction along the food chain among different organisms. And this question asks us to explain the whole story. Therefore, we need to realize the cause and effect first. The cause is the extinction of the shark. The effect is the overpopulation of the producer, the aquatic plants in the marine ecosystem. And then we need to recall the predation relationship along the food chain. Aquatic plants, the, they are the producer, and then they will be eaten by the small fish, big fish, and then the shark. So we have the primary, secondary consumer, and the top consumer. And then we need to predict the change of the population of the organism involved in the food chain between each trophic level. We need to construct the whole story. And the cause is the extinction of the shark. The population of the secondary consumer will not be kept under control. Therefore, the population will increase because no more shark to eat the big fish. And this secondary consumer will prey on the primary consumer, leading to a great job in the leading to a great job in the population of the primary consumer. So you can see that no more small fish. As a result, the producer will become too numerous because the number of primary consumers has decreased. So for this question, it asks you about the food chain. In 215 question 3, it's about the food web. So what if this time the octopus, they extinct? So what will be the population of the starfish or the fish or even the shark? So before that, I have made a short video about this food web. So let's take a look for revision. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question starts from the Pyramid of Balmas. It has two concepts, food chain and the ecological interaction. For the food chain, you need to recall the concept that it shows the sequence of the organism in the particular feeding relationship and also shows the directions of energy and the material flow in an organism. And then we can put different food chain together to form a food web. And then there are different questions about the food chain before. So you can watch this video for revision. Question can ask you to construct the food chain according to this pyramid of bar mass or construct the possible pyramid of number of this food chain. And for the ecological interaction, I need to mention the niche again. It is a crucial concept in this chapter. Due to the ecological interaction, we can study the population size changes and we need to recall the concept of time lagging. So in this question, it says that if there is an extinction of the shark, so there will be an overpopulation in the producer. And my question is that, imagine that today, all the sharks, they disappear, extinct. So will the population size of the producer, the aquatic plant, will increase immediately? No, no, no. It takes time. There is a time lagging effect in the ecosystem. And in this question, I also want to talk about the energy loss. So you need to do the revision about how is the energy loss along the food chain.